class are you in? I'm in the third class. My name is Uncle Liu. As soon as the first year of high school started, a beautiful female classmate approached her, just because she was the top scorer in the city's high school entrance exam this year. Faced with the enthusiasm of her female classmate, she, coming from deep in the mountains, shyly didn't know how to respond. Little did she know that in the first English class, she couldn't understand a word the teacher was saying. I asked you to open to page 64, not page 46. She suddenly realized the gap between her and her classmates. Every day during lunch break, she borrowed her classmate's audio recorder to practice English. Having never used a computer before, she couldn't even follow simple commands. Classmates laughed at her level, saying she wouldn't even get the basics in half a year. She watched enviously as her classmates operated the computers skillfully. After that, she only ate one bowl of plain rice a day, spending the rest of her lunchtime in the computer room practicing, but her eyes were filled with determination and perseverance, believing that through her own efforts, she would break through the shackles of fate. Why aren't you eating any vegetables? Ah, oh, Sujan, I'm getting angry. Uncle Liu had already noticed her living situation, so he often used the excuse of not liking meat to deliberately put a plate of meat dishes in her bowl, and their relationship grew more and more harmonious. Surprisingly, in less than three weeks, she had built her own personal website. Wow, what kind of webpage is this? I made it myself. The female classmates looked at her with admiring eyes. This story of educating Su Li, a seemingly naive girl from a remote mountain village, is an inspirational tale you shouldn't miss. When Su Li was in middle school, she was a well-known figure in the school. I've been in school for three years and I've never seen you do math homework even once. Are you special or something? I don't do any homework. I haven't done a single book. I'm doing this anymore. You, what kind of student are you? Not having money to buy workbooks was her excuse for not doing homework. Su Li's behavior made the already frustrated teacher Shu furious. At the principal's urging, a special class meeting was called. Teacher Shu wanted to give Su Li an ultimatum, and the meeting would test her on junior high school math knowledge. Who knew she could always answer so fluently? Not only could she respond to the basic knowledge points, but she could also draw inferences beyond what the teacher had taught. This left Teacher Shu utterly amazed. Assistant Shu, it's not over yet. You've completed this test paper, haven't you? Teacher Shu deliberately used competition level questions to test her true abilities, but unexpectedly, Su Li went a step further. She finished the entire paper in the brief moment it took the teacher to turn around. She took the test paper and carefully reviewed it, revealing an inscrutable expression. Su Li not only answered quickly, but also got everything correct. This was the standard of the previous citywide junior high school math competition. Back then, even the first place winner only scored around 80 points. She suddenly realized that Su Li possessed an extraordinary talent for mathematics. Teacher Shu had her own dreams too. She wanted to pursue graduate studies and leave the mountains behind for a better life. But Mrs. Shu worried that if she left for studies, she might never return. She kept a watchful eye on her husband every day, not letting him out of her sight, trying every way to prevent him from studying or revising. I know what you're thinking. You want to go to Beijing, to leave our backwater town behind. For the past decade or so, Teacher Xu has faced defeat after defeat. She herself has become somewhat discouraged ever since Su Li, this prodigy, arrived in the township. She's invested all her hopes in her, wanting Su Li to set aside her own dreams. The city's junior high school math competition registration is coming up, but Teacher Xu doesn't dare to enter her because she doesn't want Su Li to lose sight of her own dreams. The registration for Su Li's junior high school math competition in the township is approaching, but the registration fee of several dozen yuan hasn't been settled yet. Teacher Xu didn't want to hinder Su Li's future, so she went to visit her family. But as soon as she entered, she saw Su Li and her father in a scuffle. It was because when Su Li had gone to help her mother with farm work, she saw bruises all over her face, so she went home to confront her father about it. In the end, neither could convince the other, and that's when things got physical. Just as the situation was becoming awkward, Su Li's grandfather hearing the news rushed home. Teacher Xu showed him the test paper, hoping he would support Su Li's participation in the competition. After Teacher Xu and the grandfather left, Su Li's mother hurried back home. Seeing the couple was safe, she went to prepare dinner with a relieved mind. Su Li's father is actually her stepfather. Her biological father was a young intellectual from the countryside who passed away just before she was born. Her mother remarried the current lame man. The family dynamics are tense, and the household isn't harmonious, resulting in Su Li being both insecure and strong-willed. This grandfather, though not related by blood, cares deeply for her. During dinner, her stepfather complained that she only knew how to study and didn't help with farm work. Su Li and her stepfather argued bitterly, leading to her refusing to go to school. Who told you to skip class? Teacher Shu criticized him briefly and handed him the admission ticket, but he didn't even look at it and continued to slack off. A few students who skipped class were caught doodling on the wall by the sharp-eyed Teacher Shu. He then took them to pull weeds and clean the grounds, while Shuli sat comfortably on the ground doing math problems. When the parents of the truant students learned about the incident, they complained to the school, but the principal took full responsibility. 
On the day of the exam, they wanted to take a tricycle carrying watermelons into the city, but the driver was worried about damaging the watermelons and tried to make them get off. Just as they were happily chatting, they were suddenly forced off the tricycle. Teacher Shu got up, ignoring his pain, and tried to chase after it several times without success. Shu Li had no choice but to go to the exam alone. She was about to enter the exam room carrying the heavy watermelon the teacher had bought, but was stopped by two invigilators who wouldn't let her in. Go back. Go back where? Back to the mountains. I haven't even taken the exam yet. According to the rules, you can't enter the exam room if you're half an hour late and you're already 45 minutes late. Shuli thought her situation was special and she should be given another chance to take the exam, but the invigilators insisted on following the rules, saying that not allowing late entry is fair to all candidates. Just as they were at a standstill, the head invigilator, Wen Xing, came over and gave her an exam paper, telling her to take it outside. Shuli was arranged to take the exam in a special room. The head invigilator looked at the completed papers, silently judging her in his mind. The accompanying parents curiously peeked through the fence, and by the time teacher Shu rushed to the exam room, the exam had already ended, and students were leaving one after another. Shu Li took out her exam paper to show him, and after looking it over from start to finish, she found no mistakes, feeling very relieved. What? How did you bring the exam paper out? They're not supposed to let you keep it. After teacher Shu understood what had happened, he angrily took Shu Li to the office to demand an explanation. The invigilator's attitude was very firm, stating that not allowing entry after being more than half an hour late is a rule and there's no room for flexibility in matters of principle. Teacher, you're telling me about the rules? You people who are well-fed and idle, coming up with so many rules. If this doesn't work and that doesn't work, what's supposed to work? Who says we must live in the mountains? Shu has been teaching for over a decade and has never met a self-motivated student like Shu Li. She doesn't want to hinder the student's future, so she's trying to give Shu Li a chance for a child from a remote mountain area to achieve the same results as a city kid. They must put in ten times more sweat and tears. Only then can they leave the mountains they grew up in and have a chance to rewrite their destiny. No matter how difficult the road ahead, she remains hopeful and determined to break through with practical actions. Although Shu Li didn't enter the exam room according to regulations, she still submitted her paper on time. The more teacher Shu spoke, the more emotional she became letting out years of pent-up frustration. The exam supervisor listened in astonishment, deeply moved by the story. Have you all looked at this exam paper? She finished in just 45 minutes. The paper is answered exceptionally well. Let's accept it then. No, we can't just accept it. Teacher, please grade this paper. We'll have a lot to discuss when we get back. Next year, there's an international math competition for middle school students. Bring your student. 100, 100. Yes. This child, I'm impressed. Shu Li's mathematical talent was recognized by teacher Shu, opening up a path different from other rural children. To leave the mountains, studying is the only way out. Persevering in her studies is the most effective path. She promised to keep working hard and vowed to bring back a gold medal. Teacher Shu was deeply moved after hearing this. That night, watching a sports competition on TV and seeing Chinese athletes receiving awards, listening to the majestic national anthem, her eyes welled up with tears. She thought to herself that if Shu Li won a gold medal, the scene would probably be just as spectacular. She silently vowed to help Shu Li leave the mountains. Mrs. Zhu, unaware of what had transpired, looked at her intently. Attached to the high school entrance exam field report is a volunteer practice form. They hope Shu Li will apply for a vocational school to learn home appliance repair and take on some responsibility for the family. Is Shu Li taking the entrance exam your idea? It was my idea. I told her. L. You're wasting talent. Do you realize that? Fate always seems to be against Shu Li. In such a poor and weak family, there are all kinds of conflicts and hardships. Ji Fu wants to provide warmth for this family, but he's disabled and can't do much. The day before the exam, her mother scraped together just 6 yuan and 60 cents for her to buy snacks during the test period. What about my 500 yuan? Well, it's not there. Did you see it? I didn't see it. You must have forgotten where you put it. To ensure Shu Li could take the exam in Xi'an Cheng with peace of mind. Teacher Shu secretly took his wife's money and made up a story to cover it. This morning, they still rode the pumpkin-selling tricycle to Xi'an Cheng. But this time, the old driver happily agreed. Before Shu Li even left the exam room, ice cream was prepared. With Teacher Shu's encouragement and support, she was admitted to a key high school. This news doesn't seem like good news for Shu Li and her mother. Facing an additional 5,000 yuan tuition fee for an already poor family, this is undoubtedly an even worse situation.
when teacher shoes saw the tuition fee of 5,000 yuan. He hesitated a bit, as if regretting the bold words he had just spoken. The stepfather thought that he didn't heed his advice in the beginning, and Mr. Chu privately filled out the application for Shu Li. Now she was admitted but had no money to pay for it, so he threw the pumpkin angrily. To let his grandson, who had no student status, continue to go to school, the grandfather braved the heavy rain to sell books that were not yet completed. Sensible Shu Li went to the market to pick persimmons to lighten the family burden, while teacher Shu, in order to let him study calmly for the math competition, loaded persimmons himself under the scorching sun to make money. The family struggled to gather Shu Li's tuition fees, with the start of school looming. The tuition fee of 5,000 yuan still had a big shortfall, burdening their family. Teacher Shu only wanted Shu Li to continue her studies. He did not hesitate to write a contract for his wife. And Mrs. Shu, seeing his happiness, took out the 3,000 yuan that was already prepared from the box, handed over the money and regulations. But after reading the regulations, the wife crumpled them up and passed them to the fourth brother. Forget our agreement. Teacher Shu's love ushered him onto a new path in life. Perhaps only children who truly leave the mountains can know how hard it is to leave. Weeds that have no choice in their fate can only grow wildly in their toughest form. Teacher Shu went to visit Shu Li at school, but was knocked over by a student on a bicycle. Several female classmates fancied the walnuts and dates, so they asked Teacher Shu to buy some for them. Teacher Shu said, I don't want money, I just need meal tickets. Hey, 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 that student, you gave me an extra one. Shu Li, who came out of the school cafeteria, happened to see this scene. She was so moved that her eyes blurred with tears and the fourth mother felt as though she had done something foolish to help her, and as a student, she was awkwardly rubbing her brother. Teacher Shu is like a father to her, providing deep care both emotionally and materially. She dropped Shu Li off at the dormitory entrance, but didn't want to go up, using catching a ride as an excuse to return to Banwan village. Teacher Shu, I remember the promise I made to you. It's all right, don't worry too much. Just focus on your overall development. Back at the dorm, Shu Li shared walnuts and jujubes with her classmates. She knew Teacher Shu's desire for math competitions, but tried not to dwell on it too much. Shu Li felt something was happening and rushed out, seeing Teacher Shu in the distance waiting at the bus stop with his lunchbox, his presence lingering as she left the mountains. Grandpa, teacher, stepfather and mother. Their sacrifices for her suddenly brought tears to her eyes. Everyone has had good teachers to some extent, but some people recognize their efforts while others don't. To ease her family's financial burden, Shu Li worked part-time at a moving company. Despite being bruised and battered, she persevered even continuing to work with an injured leg. Ah, oh, slow down. Startled by the landlady's shout, Shuli's hand slipped, dropping the fish tank which shattered. The owner demanded 700 yuan, and classmates led by Liu Su Su came to comfort her. We'll pay back the 700 yuan for you. The teacher said to study without worry, and speak up if you have any difficulties. When school let out for summer break, Shuli rushed home. She planned to use the holiday to earn money and repay her classmates' donations. Her stepfather and mother didn't blame her for this. Suddenly, she realized that those familiar mountains were her warm, comforting harbor. Even her usually stern stepfather had a smile on his face. In that moment, all of Shuli's stress melted away. It's okay, child. It's not a big deal. This was the first time in 18 years that he had heard encouragement from his stepfather. Shuli silently changed her opinion of him in her heart. Early the next morning, teacher Shu sent an invitation for the Chinese division of the Mathematics Olympiad. Shuli thought that her classmates' donations weren't enough yet, so she wanted to sell peaches at home with her stepfather. Don't go, what? Don't go. As night fell, Shuli's stepfather led her to the edge of the community pool. He expressionlessly took off his shirt and jumped into the ice-cold, pungent water without hesitation. This scene shocked Shuli. She never imagined that this usually quiet man would harbor such deep love for her. To push her to pursue a better future, he would use such a drastic method to force Shuli to participate in the competition. I'm asking you, are you going to join this group or not? 
If you don't go, I'll have burned my legs for nothing. Can I still go? Shuli left Halfball Village again. Before storing her cup, she wiped the dust off her leather shoes. She was ready to face opportunities and challenges with a new attitude. Teacher Shu, who had been waiting at the graffiti wall for a long time, motioned for her to hurry up and not be distracted by the scenery along the way. His skin was in poor condition after being soaked in the grey, wet water. To ease Shuli's mind about participating in the competition, he didn't tell her this news. During the pre-competition training camp, she tirelessly studied problem-solving strategies. Even when she was the only one left in the huge classroom, she never dared to slack off. Through her extraordinary talent and hard work, Shuli achieved remarkable results. She represented China in the World Mathematics Olympiad for secondary school students abroad, preparing to compete for the crown on the international stage. However, her stepfather's skin condition became increasingly serious. With the help of teacher Shu and the villagers, he was transferred to the city hospital overnight. Even when he was seriously ill, he tightly held a newspaper with Shuli's name in his hand. This man who never expressed his love was actually full of affection for her. And her stepfather and mother watched the news about the competition every day in the hospital, while teacher Shu and his wife took turns following the updates. The moment she stood on the podium, her stepfather and mother were so moved that they burst into tears. Teacher Shu and his wife were speechless with joy. Shuli had not only won honor for herself, but also brought infinite glory to her family and hometown. She and her teacher were both pursuing their ideals. Teacher Shu was on the path to realizing his dreams while his wife had always supported him moving forward. Shuli's ability to win the math competition was the result of a group of people silently working behind the scenes for her. A good teacher can completely change a person's destiny. The valuable Shuli made unremitting efforts, and her excellent results were the best reward for those who cared about her. The results of our efforts don't always reap the success we expect. Faced with many choices in life, we may sometimes feel lost, but life goes on, and we must continue to walk the path ahead of us step by step. Please continue to savor this story. I look forward to our next encounter.